Hi guys, a pair of the PocketBot Collective. And today we're gonna have a look at Iron Factory's interpretation of Iron Storm, one of the Rainmakers. And I have to admit, this is my very first version of the Iron Factory Seeker Mold. I've never had one in hand before. This is my very first. And believe you me, there is plenty of them. <laughs> if you want to head over to um, um, Deluxe's channel, Hill Hasbro Reviews, then you'll, uh, uh, you'll find a video on his Iron Factory collection. And there's quite a few in there. And also our very own Andrew here on the PocketBot Collective. Um, he's reviewed uh, the Nova Storm version already, the Starscream version already on this channel. And I think he has about all of them by now. <laughs> so yeah, uh, most likely on this channel you'll be able to find each iteration of this mold. But for me, it's the very first time. Um, and I guess we'll start off by looking what he comes with. All right, he comes with a couple of things. Let's first have a quick look at the box. Iron Factory Seeker Mold is called Tyrant's Wings. And this version is the IFEX20H version, which they've called Hecatolite, although on the <laughs> back he's called a catalyte and then just like on the nova storm box it says iron wing indicating that this is indeed iron storm also comes with instructions which i admittedly haven't looked at because i looked at andrew's reviews on this channel and that made it very easy to transform this guy also comes with this little collector card. I don't know if it wants to focus because it's translucent. But yes, there you go. Apparently I have number 530. Then he comes with a flight stand adapter. This regular one that plugs in at the bottom in jet mode. Also comes with two standard... Uh, hold on. See if I can focus there. Two standard grippy hands. These have mushroom pegs. They're on there when you get them out the box. But then he also comes with a couple of extra hands, which do not have the mushroom peg. They're just slightly flared. So once you've taken the, uh, you've unscrewed the lower arms to take out uh, the standard hands. You can then just swap around to your liking with these hands. As another set of the open hands with a flared peg then, closed fist, and a completely spread hands. Full sets of all. Um, I've got a fist and a <laughs> an open hand on there right now. As you can see, you can just transform him with whatever hand on there because uh, they uh, they just sit at the bottom but I, I don't even think it's that noticeable unless you're really looking at it um, the mold is obviously quite a few years old already um, but still holds up very well I think um, even to the point where I'm, uh, I'm excited to get more of them I don't need to have all of them <laughs> but I'm definitely excited about this one so um, let's do a few quick Comparisons. I'll bring in Core Class uh, Starscream and we'll bring in DX9's Scourge. There you go. I'll just hold them up for a minute so you can see the height wise. So, compared to Core Class, this is uh, a pretty good sizing. Because, of course, New Age also has Seekers out, a whole range of them. Magic Square has a bunch of them out. But um, 
I'm, I'm taken by this design, especially in combination with like a core class star screen. And here he is with DX9's Scourge, also an older figure, which Iron Factory is updating right now. Well, actually they have done an updated version already, I must say, because while we speak, it's on its way over here. So expect a review of their Scourge version up on this channel soon. All right, so much for comparison. Let's get into transformation. And that immediately, immediately, sorry, <laughs> shows his last two accessories, his weapons, which are just plugged in at the bottom here. Let's have a quick look at them. Very nicely sculpted and painted. It's blue translucent, well, semi-translucent plastic, I guess, with some gunmetal paint on it. Has a hole and has a peg. And obviously he has two of them. They're identical, just opposite, so to say. So let's put them to the side for a minute. There's no other, no other um, real articulation on the jet mode. You can move these wings a little bit round or the back ones if you want to. There's some flaps here and the wings are tabbed into the upper arms. So if you would untab that, then you can move the wing up a little bit. Might as well untab it. There you go. See, it's just a little tab there. So there's something you could do. Um, also has some landing gear and in his lower legs. We shall flip them in for now. This one will disappear on its own during transformation, but if you don't want it there, you can also flip it in. For instance, when you have them on the flight stand. But there we go. All right, transformation. Where do we start? I guess we start with also unpegging the other arm. There we go. You can see that there's a hinge here. So this needs to hinge all the way up and then Level it down, same for the other side. And there's a wall joint in there, and there's just a hinge for the arm there. Obviously has wrist articulation. Um, what else? We can bring the nose cone down a little bit. Probably put the landing gear to the side because we need to flip in that nose completely. There we go. Then this unpegs which means you've got some clearance here to lower this down and that unclips the legs. I'll show you in a minute because the legs are sort of folded up. And there you can see that clip from the legs, which was tabbed in there. Um, I guess we do the legs first. We'll flip these down. You can also flip them back, but I like to show off these nice patterns they've made on there. Really cool. Then you pull the feet down or flip the toes out. Sorry, am I in focus there? There you go. And untab them from each other. Just a little tab there. That's his lower body done. Upper body. Make sure you have some clearance here. Just swing the whole cockpit round and then his head comes up. Also on a ball joint. Sorry, legs are also on a ball, ball joint and a cut, quite a tight one. And the knee is on a double hinge, which I'll show in a minute. Then we still need to clear his back. Fold in that landing gear, just tuck it in there. Then these wings need to rotate round and flip these extra bits down. Again, just it, rotate it around on the ball joint. Flip these bits in, there we go. Then you hinge this forward and that will tuck in behind his head. And then the, you can see there's two little holes there and there and two little pegs. Just line that up and tab it in. See, 
and that piece fills up the back of his neck. There we go. Wings can be positioned whichever way you like. Tilt them back a little bit, I guess. Knee is, uh, let's see if I pull it out completely. You can see the double hinge there, which also means you have some height adjustment. So you can extend them fully or just sit them forward just behind his knees and there you go. Then we still need to attach his null race. Leave it at uh, leave the big peg at the back and then with the hole you can put him on his arm. Oh, sorry. There we go. And the other one on the other side. There we go. Nice and secure. Have a quick look at the head. It's a very a nicely painted head, red eyes, silver face, otherwise black with a smirk on it. Oh, there you go. Um, feet are on a ball joint, by the way, so they have a natural rocker that way. Does he have a waist swivel? No, no waist swivel. But I don't think he really needs it. It's a strong figure in my opinion. Cleans up nicely. Love that uh, the um, lightning bolts or iron bolts, whatever, <laughs> shine through in robot mode. And there you go. Nice translucent cockpit. Turbines are painted silver. Details and everything. Nice. I really like this version. Um, I think it's nigh impossible to still get the Acid Storm version, so <laughs> I'm a bit late to the game. Um, but Iron Factory is bringing out two more versions of this uh, this mold this year, which will be Nacelle and Sandstorm, and I can already say I'm definitely in on their Sandstorm version. So yeah. Very cool seeker. Let's get him compared to some robots. Here he is with our boy, Iron Factory's Runabout, as a first comparison. There we go. Here he is with DX9 Scourge again and Hasbro's core class Starscream. And I think these guys size nicely together. Sorry, Star Scream's a little bit out of frame there. There we go. I'm happy with this sizing, I have to say, and with the aesthetics of this bot. I know it's IDW styled um, more than G1 styled, but I think it works very well with these other standard Legend class figures. So, yes, my verdict on Iron Storm itself but also on this seeker mode in general come on focus buddy is it's a definite must-have in anyone's legend class collection so there you go iron factories ifex 20h iron storm Thank you guys for watching and see you next time. Ape out.